Hi everyone, how's it going? Hopefully you're all doing well. Um, I'm making, I'm trying to get all my vlogs made and then I'm slowly gonna upload them, but I honestly haven't had time to upload them because up in the room where I normally do these vlogs, I don't have the ability to go online. So I have to put it on the computer and then go downstairs and upload it. And I haven't had time to do that yet. So what I wanted to do is Ellis is over there sleeping right next to me and he's kind of waking up. So I don't know how far I'll actually get for him to take a break, but I wanted to do a one week postpartum update vlog because it has been a week and a day since I've had Ellis. I wanted to share with everyone how how I'm doing and how things are going. So obviously I don't have any makeup on. Some women like wake up and put their makeup on and stuff, but that's not how it is for me. I don't really wear that much makeup anyway, but usually when I do a sit down video, I like to put on a little bit of makeup, you know, just a little bit so I don't look so tired. But uh, that's not going to happen right now. Uh, I also wanted to show like the re more like the reality of, of how it is postpartum. So I did have a shower, which was very nice. I've had, a, I've actually had a shower. Uh, I haven't brushed my hair. <laughs> First, I'll talk about immediately after Ellis uh, was, was born. So immediately after he was born, the first thing that we did before I laid down is the midwives helped me put on not just disposable underwear, which they did in England, a whole full on adult diaper is the first thing they do. Because obviously you're gonna have lots of blood and lots of discharge and extremely heavy lochia. So they helped me put on a, an, an actual adult nappy. And I will show you, cause I've got one. Cause I, I totally took extras home cause I needed them in the first couple of days. And this is basically, it's like literally an, a diaper <laughs> for adults. Here you go, there it is. And that they helped me put on and inside of that they put a huge pad like look at this this is humongous and then on top of that inside the pad they put another pad another one it's a bit thinner uh, but they put all three of those and at the time I was like geez this is a bit much you know but I forgot obviously it's not a bit much because you've just had a baby so there's gonna be so much coming out um, of the uterus like tissue and blood and all that so I put those, they helped me put those on and then they helped me lay down. And then I had Ellis for two hours. They leave you for two hours and you have skin on skin contact with your baby for two hours. It's very important. They don't weigh the baby. They don't measure the head, they nothing. They basically just lay you and have you do skin on skin and try to breastfeed your baby. So this time I didn't get that much help breastfeeding but I've already had a baby who was the same size so I think that's why they're like do you need any help and I'm like no I think I've got it so I just laid on my side and I got him to breastfeed which was great he had no problems then he fell asleep pretty quickly and so I switched him over to the other side and tried to breastfeed him again a couple minutes later just to get that established get that rolling because that also helps the uterus contract uh, helps him out and helps with bonding. So I did that and then we basically just laid in bed, me, Alvin and Ellis for two hours. It was fantastic. And after that they came in, took Ellis and then they did all the measurements and the weighing and that sort of thing and gave back, put on his first nappy and then they gave him back to us. So at that point it was too soon after the birth to really feel anything other than the fact that I had just I mean you don't really feel anything. There wasn't really any soreness, nothing like that had set in yet. But when I did stand up immediately like four hours after he was born to move into our hotel room I could not breathe when I stood up so you just feel like <sighs> like you're constantly gasping for air and you can't get enough in which is totally normal and I did remember that that was going to happen but it's just like oh gosh that's such a, a rough feeling so then the midwife um we gave Ellis to Alvin and he took him to the room and I went to the I had the midwife has to see if you can go pee so she's like you need to sit and try and go pee so going pee after having a baby, if you don't have any stitches, it doesn't really sting. If you, it doesn't really sting, so that's fine. If you do have stitches, it might sting a little bit. You don't feel like you have to pee really, but then you do go pee. So it's, they're like, they have to make sure that you're actually going pee. Uh, because you're, the sensations down there are all, all different. Everything's different. You basically have no sensation except for pain. Uh, you know, but not this close after birth, that happens later on. She helped me take off that diaper, obviously, and everything was completely wet. So I can totally see why you're wearing this many layers right after baby. Uh, I liked it better than disposable underwear, which I had in England, and the maternity pads, because those I had to change so quickly, and it was really uncomfortable, and I was like, I'm already, I'm already exhausted. I have this newborn baby. I don't know what I'm doing, and I have to get up and go to the bathroom and change this 
maternity pad like 100 times. Uh, so that was actually much better. I didn't have to worry about leaking because I had a diaper on, so it pretty much didn't leak, which was really nice. And they also give you this pad that you lay down on so it doesn't get on the mattress or anything. I wore this basically the diaper with the huge pad for at least two days after at least 40 hours after I had Ellis I did wear them I even brought extras home as you can see and then I was able to switch out to a regular um uh pad I've just been using always ultra night pads and it's been fine for me I haven't had any issues with that. Um, in the UK, they have maternity pads. They're super thick pads, and I used those for a long time. But, you know, now that I'm using the always ones and they're working fine, I think I would have been fine with those in the UK. I don't really realize that I have to go pee. Like, I don't get that feeling like, oh, I have to go pee. So I just have to, which is totally normal, I just have to make sure that I actually just go to the bathroom, like, every two hours just to try. Uh, because I don't feel like I have to go pee. Which, it, it was the same with Emily. A really bad migraine which is also kind of normal so i i had to take some tylenol for that i do get migraines i have chronic my chronic migraines i have been diagnosed with that so you might have a headache uh for me it was too much because i was having extreme after cramp after pains for me i couldn't take the headache with those so i took some tylenol and the after pains or bas they're basically like contractions to shrink the uterus down were so extreme this time it was like labor contractions and i I was shocked by that. It was so painful. I couldn't breathe. They lasted so much longer than actual labor contraction, but they felt just as bad. And I was shocked by that. So the first 24 hours for me were extremely difficult in terms of the after pains. And I was not ready for that. And it was a bit shocking. It was nothing like that intense with Emmeline. It was just really rough for me. And I, I definitely had the after pains like that for at least four days. They have since eased up a lot and I'm very thankful for that. I still have them but they're not as intense and thank goodness because I don't think I could take that for that long. It was extreme. This time I did not get stitches thankfully. I'm so happy about that. I didn't get stitches. So I am sore and I've been sore. I was really sore in the first four days but now it's eased off a lot. I can walk almost normally. I'm extremely slow but I can walk almost normally. The pain and the swelling has kind of gone away and I feel so much better. When I had had stitches with Emmeline it took me six weeks before I could walk normally. So I guess it just depends. If you don't get stitches, you'll probably be feeling a lot better. At least I am uh, without stitches. The shortness of breath, sometimes I still have it, especially if I've been walking around. I'm extremely tired. It's not just because I'm up with him, but because I'm healing. You have to remember that after you have a baby, everything needs to tighten and close. It's a massive physical event on your body and you're going to be exhausted. It's kind of like, oh, I had the baby and you expect everything to be over and everything to be great. And you're like, actually, it's not. You have to heal. Your body needs to close back up, tighten back up, heal if you have stitches. It's just a, a really long healing process. And at the same time, when you have another baby and you have a new baby and maybe you have a toddler, it's just, it's a lot on your body physically. So I have to remember that I do need to like take it slow and rest. I can't just be out and about all day. It's difficult for me to do that because I'm not good at sitting down and resting. I have so much that I always want to do, but I'm trying with that. Lokia, like the, the post-pregnancy bleeding for me, it's, you know, it's still there obviously I can't go without a pad with Emmeline it lasted eight weeks so I don't know how long it's gonna last here but that's fine um going pee or anything like that I have to you have to be at least I still have to be really careful I use a little squirt bottle of water squirt some water down there dab with some toilet paper because obviously wiping is a no-go <laughs> In the very beginning, I forgot to mention that the first 48 hours, maybe more, maybe three days, I was jumping in the shower just to clean everything off with some water after I had gone pee or gone to the bathroom or anything like that because it's really useful. You, you feel clean because with the Lokia, you can feel really dirty and really gross. At least I do. And Lokia smells like in my opinion, like raw meat. It's disgusting. Obviously, they're like, it's no smell. That's not what they mean. They mean that it has like a normal period blood smell, they think, but to me, it's way worse and I don't care for it. It just, and it makes me feel dirty. So I'm always wanting to jump in the shower to rinse off still. The biggest difference is obviously my body looks way different. I don't have this huge hard pregnancy bump anymore. Um, I feel really soft and squishy all over my body, <laughs> everywhere. I feel soft and squishy. And, um, my stomach has actually shrunk back a lot. I'll show you at the end. I will show you my stomach. But it shrunk back so much quicker this time. It's still a little bit 
there and I'm still having after pain so obviously my uterus isn't fully contracted back to its size yet um, but I'm shocked at how quickly it got small I got this small maybe within like two days and that shocked me because with Emily and it took a much longer period of time I'm not really concerned about how I look I have a new baby I don't really care because I physically what I just did was a huge event on the body it's gonna take time to get back to where you want to be and I'm not really that concerned about it I'm not forget it if anyone really cares what my body looks like other than me that's totally fine it's their opinion but <laughs> I don't mind obviously I look different if I thought it was gonna look the same that's crazy I don't know um, I don't think you should be so judgmental on yourself especially with your physical appearance like look what you just did come on ladies don't be so hard on yourselves forget it um, Sleeping is going all right. I mean, sometimes I'm up with him all night. We are co-sleeping, him and I. Alvin and Emeline have been on the couch. <laughs> but we're getting a travel uh, caught for Emeline and Alvin can come back to the bed and we're gonna see how that goes. Um, we will see. Uh, but he is co-sleeping with me. He sleeps really well for the most part, I think, for a newborn. He doesn't really... In the first two days, he got up and wanted to be awake and wanted me to be awake. But now he's just waking up to eat and get a nappy change and then he's going back to bed. So I feel like he's pretty much, that to me is sleeping through the night as a newborn because he gets up to eat, but other than that he's sleeping. So he's doing really well with that and so am I. <laughs> Alvin's been fantastic about taking Emeline in the mornings because she gets up at five and the cats get up even early and I wake everyone up. It's not so good with the cats. The biggest thing that I, I obviously have to struggle with is mood swings at this point and moodiness, which to me it's been worse recently like yesterday or the day before um just being moody and I don't know why that's just how it is it was with Emmeline I definitely had the baby blues but I think that it was a much more difficult recovery for me with Emmeline we didn't have any help we were new parents I had stitches I was in so much pain it was extreme this time we have lots of help even though we have Emmeline I think I am still definitely moody like I'll be all of a sudden I'll just start crying over nothing I also have a really vivid imagination so I'll imagine something bad happening like oh my god I'll, I'll, I'll want to drink a cup of coffee and even though he's not in my arms I imagine like oh my god is myself spilling the coffee on him screaming and being destroyed forever because I've spilled hot coffee on my baby or something like I just have a really vivid imagination um, sometimes I'll just be in a bad mood for no reason I'm super happy with everything like I love my family and I Sorry about that, my camera died. So as I was saying, obviously I'm really happy with everything. I have this beautiful family and I have a place to live and I'm safe and I have food that I can eat. Everything like that is fine and great. But for some reason, I will just be in a negative or sour mood, even for no reason. I remember definitely having the baby blues that Maline, I cried a lot. I was really, um, not really depressed. It's just the baby blues that I had. I don't feel that I have that right now. I'm only a week postpartum. I do feel pretty happy most of the time. Chelsea, sorry, Chelsea's getting... No, Chelsea, come on. Come on, Chelsea. She's going to get in his face. I feel like I haven't gotten a lot of quality family time with Alvin, Emily, and Ellis because Alvin's working. Obviously, Emily's running around outside and there's so much going on here and we only have this tiny space to be together. Uh, so that's been a huge struggle for me. I really want that family bonding time. I don't feel that I have gotten it with my immediate close little family that I have made uh, with Alvin. So that makes me a bit sad and it's hard for me to deal with. Just being around lots and lots of people all the time is also difficult because I feel like there's a constant chaos. I don't have a minute of peace. I'm working unfortunately because there's so much work that I didn't get to finish before Ellis was born. I did not think he was gonna be born on 38 weeks. I think he's kind of waking up. Uh, and so I didn't get to finish everything so I've been back at work which has been putting me kind of in a bad mood because I feel like I honestly feel like I haven't had time to like just sit and just relax for a minute which I think is really important because I've just had a baby and I don't feel healed. You know, I don't feel healed. I obviously don't feel like myself. With Emmeline, I did not feel like myself for quite a, quite a while. Physically, I didn't feel like myself for at least a year. I just feel very weak. Obviously, the muscles are in the, the pelvic floor are completely stretched and the muscles in the abs are completely stretched so you don't have that feeling of like physical security within yourself at least i don't um i don't feel super sore to the point where i can't start doing pelvic floor exercises which i'm so over the moon about because i'm gonna start doing them with emmeline or after emmeline i didn't i could not i literally just couldn't even try doing them until six weeks just pelvic floor exercises um so i'm hoping that that will help me once i start doing those exercises because they do help to heal everything um, and doing some exercises for my abs a little bit too. In terms of breastfeeding, my milk came in a little bit later than Emmeline's. With Emmeline, my milk was in 
instantly. I don't even know, like, that's so rare that it happens. Literally hours after she was born, I had tons of milk and I was leaking all over the place, which is crazy. Um, this time my milk came in definitely on the second day. Uh, and it slowly came in, like I knew that it was changing, I just felt that it was changing. And then obviously I got way too much, which is totally normal for me, I think normal for a lot of women. Way too much, complete oversupply. Um, I've been struggling with it a little bit this week in terms of going through lots of clothes. I think it will even out. With Emily and I had oversupply for three, three months, three and a half months. It was very, very difficult to deal with. You may think, oh, I'd rather have too much and not enough, and that may be very true, but when you do have too much, it is a huge struggle with breastfeeding. It is, it's just a huge, there's other things that you have to worry about. Mastitis, making sure you empty them. Um, you know, you don't want to, you can, you can pump, but when you pump, it wants you to, you start, your body's like, oh, I have to make more because it's something sucking, you know? And, um, I, Emmeline would choke all the time and she wouldn't get enough. And it was just, it was just completely difficult. With Ellis, I have him breastfeeding um, at least every three hours. I try to breastfeed him more often than he actually wants because he is much more tired than Emmeline was. He sleeps more. I won't talk that much about him now, but I don't, his latch, he has such a small mouth and I had the same struggle with Emmeline that their mouth is very small so the, the latch is not wide even though it is correct. So it's not painful for me, but I'm concerned that he at this point one week later that maybe he's not draining the breast to the extent that it needs to be. I'm concerned it's going to be an issue. So I'm going to have to take him to get weighed to, to make sure that he is actually gaining weight that he needs to be and that he's getting all the food he needs to be. Uh, but that's how breastfeeding is going. It's going well. Um, there potentially could be some issues, but hopefully there won't be. And I think that's it. Other than that, generally how I'm feeling, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling better than what I felt with Emmeline. Definitely better. I think I'm just feeling a bit stressed, a bit overwhelmed because there's so much happening around me. I'm not in my own home. I don't have the space that I would normally have and I'm missing that family bonding that I really want to have. So that's that's the difference, I guess. Other than that, I feel okay. I mean, I'm moody. Some days I'm unhappy, even though I am happy inside. I'm still unhappy for some reason, which is normal. Um, I'll cry much easier. I'm maybe more snippy um, or I'm just really happy and that's completely normal. So I feel okay. I mean, I feel all right. I'm not super sore, so I'm happy about that. I'm able to walk. I was not able to walk. I did not go for a walk for two weeks with Emily because I couldn't even move. Um, and that's that. That's how I'm feeling. So I will show you my stomach real quick. So that's obviously the biggest difference. Um, I still, oh yeah, I'm still wearing my maternity jeans. I can't fit into any of my jeans. I do have a few pairs of jeans that I wore after I was pregnant with Emmeline, but I couldn't wear them for like a couple of weeks and I can't fit in them now. I'm too big. So we'll see. I'm not fitting in my jeans yet. I'm still wearing maternity jeans and I don't know how long I'm going to be wearing them for, but probably a couple more weeks. So I will show you. I don't really have a line. I didn't really get one this time, um, but everything's really loose, I think. And that's all I have left for my, my bump. So I'll pull this back up. <laughs> Look how loose it is. Um, but yeah, that's that's how I look. I did not get any stretch marks with Ellis either, which I don't think is very surprising because I really didn't get that big. I, I, I was smaller. My stomach was smaller with Ellis than it was with Emily. They were the same size, but with Ellis, I didn't really get that line uh, that you normally get. I didn't have any pulling feelings, stretching feelings, nothing. I was, I didn't itch at all. With Emmeline, my stomach was red, it itched a lot. With Ellis, I was only like 31 centimeters. That was what my bump measured. With Emmeline, it was bigger than that. I don't remember exactly. 30, I don't know exactly how big, bigger. But uh, I was smaller with him. Because <laughs> he was so low that he was, I was carrying him so low down. He just dropped and he dropped as far as he could possibly drop. That's how it was with Ellis. So that's that. That's my, my postpartum, one week postpartum update. Hopefully next week I'll feel even better and I'll try and do another one. You know, maybe I'll do another one at two weeks. Maybe I'll wait till four weeks. We'll, we'll see. If I'm feeling a lot better next week, I'll do one next week. So that's that. Well, thanks so much for watching. I am sorry this is a bit long. I think these next few videos are going to be kind of long, but that's just how it is. So have a good rest of the day and I will see you some other time this week. <laughs> Bye. Two more things I forgot to mention that I wanted to is one, I obviously don't fit into any of my clothes and I don't really have that much breastfeeding option or that many breastfeeding options. So I'm a bit disappointed about that. 
<laughs> that's the one thing. And the other thing that I forgot, I totally forgot. I was just thinking about it now and I forgot. So I guess it doesn't really matter. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember. It doesn't matter. <laughs> it doesn't matter. I'm going to go now, for real. I'm going to go. Bye. <laughs>